Well, it's November 19th and winter has started here. Hey, this is Big Guy DIY Robert coming to you with another project. I'm up at a buddy's place. <clears throat> and uh, one thing we had is we had some, uh, or he had some old trailers right here. And we had an open trailer we decide that we're going to work on and rebuild it because the frame is in excellent condition. So let's go inside the garage and take a look. So this is our project, project trailer, caravan trailer. It's a uh, all aluminum frame. What I started on with this, <clears throat> we were going to repack the bearings. So I had removed the hubs off the axle and started going through everything. And one thing to know that when bearings, the grease is going, it leaves a uh, kind of a rancid smell when you're repacking the bearings. But as we started looking at the trailer more closely, I was observing the axle. Now this trailer's been sitting for about 10 years. And as you can see, this axle is done. This is what they call a torsion axle. And what it is inside is there's like um, rubber rods in there along with steel rods and this part here twists and that's your suspension the other type of axle you have leaf springs and then this would be a solid axle <clears throat> I've had these fail personally on me um, it, it doesn't go by mileage when they fail they just fail and what happens is because of the position of them the tire will go up into the bed of the trailer and just wear out the bed and if you have to go a certain distance in order to uh, get the trailer to a safe place so what we've decided to do on this one is we're just going to rebuild and replace everything so we're replacing the axle here's our new axle all new hubs through it we're doing a new um, jack tongue jack coupler we're doing new flooring, which has already been painted and primed. This is a uh, three-quarter inch flooring. <clears throat> and we're going to do all new wire harness throughout. Our wires go from the coupler down the center of the channel, down these tubes, and then inside some other tubes. So we are replacing all of the lights including the marker lights and the corners so you got red here you got uh orange up here in this corner where we got our parts i know it's upside down but etrailer.com doing all new pigtails here are marker lights here are the round lights for the center Uh, let's see what else are we replacing? I think that's it at the moment. Now, when you're working with trailers, ground wire is always white. When you're working on uh, boat trailers, snowmobile trailers, any kind of trailer, the ground wire is always white. When you're working in a boat, the ground could be either yellow yellow black or green but most of the time it's yellow or black so it's something to keep in mind when you're working on trailers or working on anything is take note of what your ground wire color will be so first thing I have to do is I gotta not just remove the wire but I gotta snake it from up there all the way down through here your left side is yellow and brown going down 
Yellow wire is your running lights. No, brown wire is your running lights. Yellow wire is your brake light. Going down the right side or the right leg of the trailer, green is your brake light and brown is your running light. <clears throat> when the wires come down to here, they are spliced. So which way the splices are in here, I have no idea until I get into it. So we're gonna set the camera up and I'm gonna start working on pulling these lights out and pulling the new wiring in. There's one thing I wanna note. These connectors, whenever you buy trailer wiring and stuff like that, let me set this up here. You buy trailer wiring, you'll see these connectors. It allows you to bring uh, two wires in to a single wire or vice versa. Don't ever use these in a, a trailer. Don't ever use them in your vehicle. What happens is water gets inside here and then water will actually follow the wire inside. So if your wire is copper, the water just stays with inside the jacket of the wire and follows it and it actually rots the wire out from the inside out. <clears throat> One way to tell is when you cut the wire, let's see here. Yeah, let me strip let me strip this one back and I'll show you. All right. When wire becomes corroded, it turns black. And then from black, it'll become like um it'll start turning green and a b bunch of other colors. Come on. See, this is supposed to be uh, clean copper wire, and see how it's black? That's because water has gotten inside the wiring, and it's beginning to degrade the wiring. So, this is a common thing I see with a lot of trailers that I've worked on, even automobiles. <clears throat> so what I tend to use are waterproof buck connectors. So all the wiring on this trailer here, there will not be any open end wires, except obviously where you're grounding it. That's gonna be open. Um, <clears throat> but I use buck connectors that are waterproof. These are shrink wrap buck connectors. So there's uh, like, a, as it shrinks, there's like a liquid and it just seals the end of the wire. So we're not gonna get into this kind of problem down the road so I just want to make that statement as I was taking this apart and that this is from the factory this saves the factory money because these are cheap these are more expensive this takes more time to install and you got to have um, not a better skill set but you know in regards to shrinking this correctly compared to just crimping so advice don't use these crimp things, they're dreadful. All right, the new wire harness that I bought. If you're wondering how, how long you know what your wire harness should be, because they come in different lengths, just order it long. It's better to have extra wire than having to add wire. So this trailer here, I know the bed length is uh, eight, I think it's 10 feet, 10 feet length. And then I got another, what, four feet in the tongue itself here. The wire harness I bought is 20 feet long. Because you got to remember, the wire has to snake and follow the frame. So, 
a 10 foot wire is definitely not going to fit because of the right angles that you have to go through in order to get this in. So the trick to pulling your wire through is electric tape and never pull your old wiring out. So what I'm going to do here So I'm going to take these wires together and I'm doing one longer than the other for pulling it through. <clears throat> now I've already cut the pigtail off. On this, so we're just going to take this right on the wire that is hanging. Now the end here, I'm going to bend. The reason why is, <clears throat> let's say as I'm pulling the wire through, I hit a really tight spot and I yank on it. This could actually slide out of the tape. So by bending it over and then taping it on itself it's going to prevent that from being ripped out Well, then we got it through the first part. I have to untape it. I'm not going to cut it because I need all the length of wire I can use. All right, what I'm opening up right now is my ground wire. This is a tilt trailer, which means the back, the, where you're loading your sleds on, that tilts up. So you got a pivot point. If I can point to it. Uh, right there. That's your pivot point. So if you attach a ground, <clears throat> up here to the tongue, the trailer is not going to be fully grounded because of this pivot point. That doesn't mean it's always metal against metal. So in a situation like this, you have to run a ground wire from here, from the, uh, from the coupler, from the tongue, all the way back to the trailer, the rear end of the trailer. <clears throat> I forgot to pull that in, but that's all right. What I have here is called a snake. This is a, you find this, if you were gonna buy this in the electrical section of any big box store, this allows you to, to bring wire through tight areas. So I'm just gonna run the snake through my tongue part and then pull the white wire inward.
So, here's our wire. On the pigtail, you can see that ring. This would normally be attached to the trailer here for grounding, but because this has a pivot point, cut this off, and we're going to attach it to this. Wire strippers. This is my butt connector, so it's the shrink tubing. You'll see I'll heat it up with a, a, a micro torch. You still gotta crimp it. You use a shrink tubing, you want to work your flame around the whole tube. If you just do one side, it will actually burn. Let's see here. So that's your shrink tubing. So it shrinks around the wiring and then there's like a liquid that's released inside and seals the wiring up inside the butt connector itself. So water will not intrude in that. So then one question you're probably asking is how long should this pigtail be for your trailer? Rule of thumb is I usually do approximately uh, 12 inches to 14 inches past. So that's about there. So it's just sitting on the ball. You got about another 14 inches before it plugs into the vehicle. This is a four pin flat, common for this. So I'm gonna put it in the hyper mode because I have to detach the wire here and then remember the green and brown go to this side, yellow and brown go to this side. So I gotta separate the wire and then pull it through that tube. That tube on each end, which is an aluminum tube, has uh, silicone on the end. So I gotta remove the silicone in order to get the wiring through. So I'm gonna put this into hyper mode because this will take a little time. Right. We have our new wire pulled through. This is our, our pivot point. So as you can see where it comes out, the tongue. I have a little extra in here 
We're gonna do a wire loom, split wire loom around this to protect it from chafing. Now, as it goes in these pipes, this manufacturer had these inserted into the pipe's end. I cut them in half so I can put it back on the wire, push it back in, and then silicone it. The purpose for these is so the wire does not chafe against the leading edge of this pipe. Uh, if you don't have these grommets, you can use wire loom or just electrical tape and tape it up really good so this doesn't do it. So these plastic grommets are on both ends of the pipe. So earlier I showed you those blue splicers. This is what the manufacturer did. He spliced it and then they just put silicone around the whole thing. That's a hack. So we're gonna change this out. So what you'll see here, the plastic tube. Uh, where are we? Right here. It's a single wire that goes through that. That single wire goes up to the front. Through this marker light. And then the ground for this marker light more than likely, I don't feel anything, more than likely it's just screwed in somewhere against the frame. So my ground wire is running from here down here and it'll run to the back of the trailer, but I don't have to run the ground to the front and the same for this side. I don't have to run the ground to the front because the frame is gonna be grounded in the back and since the frame is all welded, the ground will be carried through the entire frame, so that won't be an issue. So, we're gonna take this apart. One thing to do is save the old wiring because should you ever need the wire, you wanna keep the same colors uh, throughout the system itself, the wiring system. You start monkeying around with different colors, you're gonna mess someone else up or a technician who's trying to repair it. So, we're gonna go back into hyper mode while I disconnect these two corners and remove this light and pull a new wire through, possibly, or I'll reuse the same wire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, when I take the light out, I'm gonna take a, inspect the wire to see if it's black inside. If it is, I'm replacing it. All right, so we're on the front marker light, as you can see. It's a single tube, plastic tube, that runs underneath the channel here. See, as you can see our tubes here. So it's a single wire. Now, my, I, I stripped the wire to take a look at the color of it to see if it was still copper and it was black. So that wire's rotted. So I grabbed the old trailer wire, because the new trailer wire is just long enough, even though it's 20 feet and the trailer's 10 feet with, what, four feet here in the front. Um, I just have enough wire to get me to the corners. And then that's why you save your old trailer wire and you can cut it and see if you got clean copper. So this piece here is the old trailer wire and I had clean copper, but it was short by, what, five inches? So here's my waterproof buck connector, another waterproof buck connector, and then this is the pigtail that attaches to my light. So we're gonna pull this back into the tube because the buck connector will fit inside there. And now I have enough wiring, you can see it moving down there, at the other end. 
it underneath there. <coughs> this here, this is just screwed into the frame so it's grounded up here. Since I'm running a new ground, remember this white wire I'm pulling through, this entire frame will be one big ground. So it takes that pivot point out of the equation. So I can just screw my grounds right to the frame itself and that'll be done inside here so it's out of the elements. So let me uh, pause this and we'll come back after I install this. So we drilled, pre-drilled the hole here and then I drove in a uh, screw, type of screw you use for say uh, doing metal roofs so it's self-tapping. So now my ground is in, bring this through a little rubber grommet which we push back in. And then the new lights I purchased, or the new lights that are purchased, I should say, I didn't purchase them, are uh, LEDs. These are uh, completely sealed LEDs, so these can go underwater. Um, these will last so much longer than your regular lights. So to know which way this is supposed to go, you don't know until you add power. So for now, we're just gonna plug it in. And just let it hang out, hang out of the trailer. So when we power all the lights up, if any of these are not on, you just flip it around because LED is directional. Meaning uh, it only goes, it only plugs in one way. So that's one corner done. Now we got that corner to work on, which is even worse. All right, I'm gonna show you something here. Interesting. Um, as this comes down, we have a marker light that goes into this corner, and then you got your tail light here. That means we got to split the power for the running light to, to do two lights. So this is what I do. I grab two wires, strip the ends, attach it to a butt connector. Then, attach to the end of my wire here. Crimp it. Give it a tug to be sure that it's crimped. So now I have one power wire for this marker light and one power wire for the tail light. Now here, this wire here along with a white wire, this is running to the center of the trailer to power the um, center lights. And what it looks like the manufacturer did is he ran a power wire from here all the way to the other side. So he connected the running lights all the way around. That's not really necessary. Maybe it's uh, redundancy on their part. There's no big deal about it. I don't know if I will do it because I don't know if I have enough wiring found wiring to do it. I have enough wire to run it from here to the center, but not the other way around. But we'll have to see. So meanwhile, I'm gonna put my pigtails on here. So on the pigtails, 
For the tail light, you have a three wire setup. So white is ground, gives you your eyelet. Red, let me think about this. Red is your brake light and your directional. Black is your running light. The pigtail that runs your marker lights, it's only a two wire setup. So ground and power. <clears throat> I'm going to run, I'm going to attach these grounds together. And what I'm gonna do is go two wires into a single wire a white wire and I'm going to run that wire across the entire back because I'm going to use that same ground wire to attach all the lights in the back here and then at one corner maybe this corner I don't know I haven't decided yet um, we're going to ground the wire back here probably the other tail light when I bring all the wires together so first thing Cut those off. Alright, there's a little thought to this. So, let's reiterate, here's our splice for our running lights. I got one end coming out this side, and one end coming out this side. Just remember, this is the pigtail for the marker light, which goes in here. And then we got yellow goes to red, because that's my brake light and directional. Black goes to brown, because that's my running light. And then here's my ground, which I'm gonna run a wire from here all the way across the entire back, because I have to splice it three times right here, and then have a second line running all the way down there. So it's gonna be one ground across the entire back. All right, this is gonna be the most confusing part. So this is the right side of the trailer. Here's your brake light, brake light signal, your running light ground, and this is your ground running from the front of the trailer. 
the ground has to be spliced four times. So as it comes down, here's my first splice, and I'm using a shrink wrap uh, ring connector. That'll be attached to the frame here. You can see the old one was right there. I'm just going to go to the right of it. And then part of it runs down to this is the pigtail for the tail light, the ground for the pigtail for the marker light is going to go along with the same screw. So at the same time I have to run a ground to hit these other three lights. So this is my other ground that I'm going to snake through and it's got to be spliced every single time for each light here. This is my power for those three lights. Yes, I know the wire is blue. It's the only thing I had. I ran out of brown wire. So with the running lights coming in, they had to be spliced three times. So first time is for marker light. Second time is for tail light. And third time, is for the marker lights in the middle. So I'm just going to hold the camera here so you can take a look at this carefully and how this is wired. Marker light, ground, ground to the next pigtail, brake signal, running light. I'll also post at the end of this video a picture of the wiring diagram I have for trailers. Uh, hopefully it will show up, but I'll try to leave the picture up there so you get an idea. So next we got to snake the wiring through there. All right. So I showed you what I did there. We got our blue wire. So this is all the splicing I had to do. These are all waterproof buck connectors, as usual. So here's my ground. Grounding this wire. Comes back out. Comes into here. Splits again for here. Splits again from here. And I actually have it coming down here and connecting these lights. So my ground runs from, let's see, from here, it's grounded right there, screwed to the frame, up through there, and then it's spliced, or no, it's not spliced, it runs from there all the way to the pigtail. That light's grounded on its own, and that light's grounded on its own. So I have one grounding point for all the rear lights and that's behind here. So next is to put those lights in and then we're gonna do an electrical test and see how they come out. All right, I'm using a uh, AC to DC tester. This would be a pigtail coming from the vehicle and plugged into the trailer and the lights did not work the first time around. I had a bad ground right here. So using my tester and probing around for power. So I probed there, probed here, 
And then I started probing here on each side of the ground, and that's where I found out that this connection was a bad connection. Hey, it happens. But good thing is uh, everything works. So now we got to test the brake and signal lights on there. So let's set this up. So the lighting's all done. So now the lights themselves push into these rubber grommet booties. I'm gonna do that all the way around. If you have trouble pushing them in, use a little um, Windex, wet it, and it'll slide in. So next, we're gonna do the axle. With the axle, we don't have to worry about alignment on this because the holes are fixed on both sides. So, and I know the alignment's not perfect on this because one of these tires this one if you look at the tread it's stepped here 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 it's a little higher like every other when that happens it means there's alignment issue I don't know if the alignment's caused because maybe the axle was going and it wasn't flexing properly you know the, the, the suspension part of it or if it's the measured distance from here to the corner from here to this corner and then vice versa we're not going to bother doing that because it is what it is so let me get these lights all pushed back in and we'll start on the axle next one thing i forgot to mention is i'm going to unplug every light and put dielectric grease on every single connection that way uh we can reduce corrosion in the long run should these lights ever have to be replaced but again these are all LED lights these are submersible lights means they can go underwater and so all the lighting on here is all everything is waterproofed so all right come back in a moment all right next is the axle we're gonna be putting in place before we do this this uh, entire snowmobile frame is aluminum and here we got galvanized steel so we need a way to separate the steel from touching the aluminum the way this uh, old axle was installed was it was a plate this here is about an inch thick piece of steel that sits on the top part here of the axle bolts are coming up through and as they come through the holes then we got a second plate that sits on the top we've already purchased our galvanized bolts to support the axle but what we're doing to separate them from the aluminum this is a uh, roofing for uh, when you're rubberizing a roof this is a uh, roofing material so it's it's rubber 
And so what we did is we cut it to shape. So this will go on a large block, like so. That'll go against the aluminum. And then this, as this place sits on the top of the aluminum frame right here, this will sit on the aluminum frame first and this on top to separate it. So the thing is, is with steel, with steel, steel's much harder than aluminum and you got a dissimilarities between two metals. And when that happens, there is a chemical reaction where one is going to corrode the other. So steel will corrode aluminum, it will corrode it much quicker. So you have to have what we call an, ins an insulator, that's what I like to call it, a membrane that separates the steel from touching the aluminum. And this is the answer for right here, this is a piece of rubber. If you don't, obviously you're not going to have access to something like this. This is from a construction site. Other options is it doesn't have to be rubber. It could be plastic. You can go to um, any store like Bed Bath & Beyond or uh, Home Goods, Target, Walmart, and you can buy these cutting boards. They're, they're really thin plastic, very pliable plastic and you can roll them up um, into a circle, the cutting boards, because they're thin, they're not this thick plastic. You can use that, you can cut that into shape and cut the holes into it, like so, so the bolts can go through it. That plastic's not gonna deteriorate because it's being sandwiched in there, but it is being used as an insulator to separate the aluminum from the steel. So that's one option, um, but anything rubber, anything plastic, uh, if you don't have options of a cutting board, you can use a milk carton, believe it or not. A milk carton, um, a gallon of water jug, that's plastic. Just cut that to the shape you need, and you can use that as an insulator. It doesn't have to be thick, it just needs to separate the two metals. That's it. So we're gonna put this into uh, hyper mode, or whatever you want. The, on my phone it calls it hyper, hyper something or other. And we're gonna start installing this axle. All right, our axle's installed. That's the spacer I was talking about, the square spacer. Here's your insulator. Here's your top plate. Oops, sorry. Here's your top plate and then your insulator. So, galvanized steel, aluminum. So, the nice thing about these trailers is the axles, it's, it's complete. So, we're gonna throw on new tires. And uh, this thing will be all set. Next will be flooring, but that won't be done tonight because we have to do uh, some support in the back here because that aluminum part there is separated. Uh, the weld broke. So we're putting a two by 10 all the way across to put support underneath the flooring as well as to be able to install D-rings all the way across. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna put some two by 10 lumber in here and four D rings here on this side and then four D rings down the center. That way we can carry both uh, ATVs and UTVs on this trailer along with the snowmobiles. So that's it, that's it. The wiring is definitely time consuming. Uh, I just ran into one problem and now it's right in the beginning with the uh, harness, the pigtail. I didn't have a good ground and of course that means the whole trailer doesn't light up. So any questions, rifle them down below. Uh, I've done a lot of trailers so I'm familiar with them and 
uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, Big Guy DIY Robert signing off. Have a good one. See ya.